Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick follow up on the router table trivets as well as the jig. Um, I had a couple of viewers make some good suggestions. Uh, one viewer, N8 guy, recommended putting stop blocks on your fence, uh, setting stop blocks for each cut, and that way the stop blocks will stop your distance of travel for each slot. And you just reset those stop blocks depending on the uh, cut you're making, one, two, three, or four which is a good idea. The numbers on the front of the jig, those one, two, three, four numbers on the left and right side of the jig, those are for your stop and start points. Those are for your distance of travel. When you have your uh, stop marks, stop and start marks set up on your fence, you just follow those numbers and you go one, one, next cut, two, two, three, three, four, four. You know, and that, that's your distance of travel. But, if that's a little bit difficult for you or maybe you might go past that one mark a little bit or that two mark a little bit uh, stop blocks will keep you from doing that so great suggestion good idea appreciate that uh, another user recommended that uh, maybe set your fence back uh, all the way for that fourth cut your fourth and final distance cut and uh, use one inch spacer sacrificial fences if you can find some material that is about one inch thick or maybe uh, mill, mill a couple of boards down that are one inch thick, you can use those as sacrificial fences and you would put all three of them up to uh, make your first cut, remove one, make your second cut, remove one, make your third cut, and so on and so forth. And that's, that's actually a, a real good idea. If you, if you can either glue up or mill down some one inch stock, you know, some sacrificial fences for your router table, uh, specifically to add along with this jig, that's another excellent idea. And I think that uh, came off of Lumberjocks, and I don't have my Lumberjocks page up, uh, so I don't can't tell you who uh, recommended that, but it was a real good idea. Another viewer had pointed out to me that I didn't cover bit adjustment, you know, bit height adjustment in the video. And I thank him for pointing that out to me, and I did cover it but I cut that section out of the video. It was a long, drawn-out session, uh, and the video was long enough as it is, and we'll get into the video length in just a minute. But I ended up cutting that section out, and I should have left the little part about the uh, bit height adjustment in there, and I didn't. Um, what I did was, is I lowered my bit to where I was making shallow cuts, and I think my first cut on the trivets was like a quarter inch deep. And what I did was, is I made three trivets, and it doesn't matter if you're making one, three, or a hundred. I had the bit set to a half inch high. That accounted for the quarter inch base, because you remember, you got to add in that base in there. Um, and it cut into my trivet about a quarter inch, and I was making a quarter inch pass. And I made all my cuts on all my trivets at a quarter inch depth. Then I raised my bit up made my second pass and I raised my bit up again and made my final cleanup pass and my final height pass which my final blade height was 5 eighths of an inch that is 3 eighths which is what we want we want to go into these trivets 3 eighths of an inch on both sides so 3 eighths and then we were adding in a quarter of an inch to account for the base of the jig so the final bit height was 5 eighths of an inch um, and I didn't cover that in the videos. Hopefully you'll watch this follow-up video and you're not going to uh, Attempt to make those cuts in one fell swoop, you know, because that's a lot of meat to be taken out in one time and um, You need to make shallow passes and that way you get cleaner cuts as well So I do apologize about leaving that out now I had a viewer uh, leave a comment to me said Lane, you know your videos are way too long and uh, you explain things too slowly. Well, I'm not going to apologize for that. Uh, yeah, lately my last few videos or my last videos, uh, you know, since I started this new segment have been running around 10-15 minutes long, which I think is a, a decent amount of length for a video. Uh, this particular video ran around 20-21 minutes. And the reason for that is uh, I made this project specifically because a viewer wrote me and asked me, told me that he had just got into woodworking. He, he doesn't really know that much about it. He got into woodworking. He just went out and bought him a table saw uh, and um, 
a couple of other tools, I can't remember exactly what they were, and he wants to make trivets on a router table. Well, the first thing I did is I referred him over to Steve Ramsey's video, The Trio of Trivets. Now, if you haven't seen Steve Ramsey's video, uh, The Trio of Trivets, you can click this link right here and watch that. He did real well. He, did, uh, he made two trivets in a video, and then he actually did a live segment where he did a Q&A. He made the third trivet while he was doing a question and answer. And uh, you can see all those videos by clicking this link here. Um, well, the gentleman wrote me back and said that he had seen Steve's Trio of Trivet videos, uh, but he was looking for a way to make trivets specifically on the router table and asked me if I could help out. So now I don't like making projects uh, that are pretty much similar or close to something that another woodworker has done in a video, especially Steve. Uh, Steve and I, I consider Steve a really good friend and I don't want to infringe on or try to duplicate or make something that he has made unless I ask him first if it's okay. Uh, and with regards to this trivet video, I wrote Steve and said, hey, I know you made the trio of trivets. Uh, someone's asking me to make a trivet video on a, you know, by using a router. Do you have any problems with that or would you like to make the video? And Steve said, no man, go for it. Uh, so I felt okay to go ahead and make that video. Um, and I did. Uh, and the reason for the video length was because I wanted to teach something in this video to you as well as that viewer that specifically requested it. Um, there's sometimes, you know, in some videos, I really don't think you can learn anything in a 10 minute woodworking video. If you're new to woodworking, you might be skilled and experienced in all that and, and fine, you just want to see woodworking and you, you know, uh, you watch a 10 minute video, watch one of my short videos and everything, and you might be able to get the concept because you know what's going on. Uh, you can say, oh, I, I know how he's doing that, or I know how he made that, and you know, you could, if you wanted to duplicate that project, you probably could. You could probably go right out to your shop and do it. But there's some woodworkers out there that don't, that, that don't have those skills. They're just getting into it. And that's what I'm all about, is teaching the new woodworkers, as well as the experienced woodworkers, different projects. And my projects aren't the greatest in the world, but I actually want to teach something. So I went a little long, and I explained this because I wanted that viewer to be able to, or any viewer, to be able to go out to his shop after watching my video or maybe play my video while he's out in the shop and be able to make this jig and make these trivets without any problem. So that's why I went into the long explanation. I'm not going to go into apologizing or anything for the length of my videos. Um, sometimes you're going to get some long videos from me because I really, that's the whole, you know, I love I wish I was as entertaining as Steve Ramsey. That man's funny. Uh, but I'm not that entertaining. So all I have is my ability to show someone uh, something in woodworking and maybe teach them something. Teach them a tip, a technique, a trick, or a project. And that's what I've got going for me is, is my ability to do that. And of course, uh, I probably don't do it well. You know, I probably don't explain myself well enough or maybe I over explain. But, I'm thinking about that woodworker that doesn't have any experience and wants to learn. And I want, you know, to be there to be one of his aides or guys to, to help him or her, you know, learn how to build a project. So I went into explanations and I explained it slowly. Not that I was thinking that I was talking to a third grader or something like that. I just wanted it to be understood. I wanted each little step to be understood so that way there were no questions and that viewer was able to do what he wanted to do and, and be able to make those trivets. And I wanted to do what was asked of me to help him learn how to make those trivets on a router table. And, you know, I, I think I did a pretty good job. So, that brings up a discussion in the comments section. Let me know what you guys think, you know, I mean, I know there's some various different uh, woodworkers out there, different viewers out there that they like the shorter videos, and then there's some that like the longer videos, and then there's some that don't care if the content is good, how long the video is. And um, I, if you're a new woodworker, and, and especially if you're viewing my channel right now, and if you're a new woodworker, can you learn anything uh, in 10 minutes? In, t in watching a 10 minute video, can you learn anything? Can you go out to your shop and make that project from what you just saw? 
uh, without any measurements, without any explanation or anything, just watching someone make that project, leave me a comment, let me know. Uh, because, you know, that's what most of my videos, that's what I do. You know, I, I rush through some of the cuts and everything, I fast forward and all, because it's pretty basic stuff. And then, in the, where I need to, I slow down. But, this 20 minute video, I wanted to teach something, and I think I did. If you think I taught something and I made a pretty good project, also leave that comment in there. Just, you know, hey, give me some feedback. Let me know if I'm, uh, you know, still doing all right. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so long videos and I explain things too slowly. I had another viewer a long time ago in a video said, hey man, when you're talking, you talk way too fast. Can you slow it down just a bit so I can understand what you're saying? And then I started to slow down in my speech. And I got a reply back him said, man, thank you very much. That was so much better to understand exactly what was going on. And so maybe I haven't found that happy medium as far as talking or explaining things too slow or explaining things too fast. Maybe I got to find my happy center where everything I say is understood clearly and uh, I'm explaining it at a pace that, you know, is normal or makes everybody happy. Uh, so remember... Uh, with regards to the jig, think about stop blocks, setting up stop blocks for each of your cuts. That was a great idea. Also, think about maybe making some one inch spacers between your fence for each cut because those cuts are one inch apart. You know, that, uh, that might work out well too. I, I might even try that and see how that does. Um, but remember your marks, get them accurate on the front of that jig. Your one, two, three, and four marks on both sides of the jig and that's your starting and stop points. If those are accurate, your cuts will be accurate and the same each and every time if you stop and start on those marks. So stop blocks, sacrificial spacers, uh, or just following my instructions and making sure that your fence and everything is set up and you're good to go. Bit adjustment, bit height adjustment, make shallow passes for each one of your cuts. And do not change your fence setting until you have made your final cut, five inch, you know, five eighths inch up. Uh, that's the three eighths inch deep, counting the quarter inch base. If you use a quarter inch base, if you use a thicker base, make sure you account for that thickness. You want to cut three eighths of an inch deep into your trivet on both sides. So that's what you got to, and then you just add in the thickness of your base on your jig and that is your final bit height. So mark that down, write it on the jig, you know, do whatever you need to do to remember that. But don't try to make it all in one pass, okay? All right, guys, well, that's it. I just wanted to follow up, uh, hit a few comments. Um, I answered some comments on the video itself, but I wanted to, I had thought there were some good ideas, so I wanted to share those ideas with you as far as the stop blocks and the sacrificial spacers. And then I wanted to talk about the length of my videos and get your feedback on what you think a good video length is uh, and if you can actually learn something in a 10 minute video uh, where not a lot of explanation and stuff is going on so let me know your different thoughts and let's uh, let's see if we can kind of nail down what is the best way to go uh, because remember now we're talking about my channel we're not talking about Steve's or Mark because uh, Mark is an excellent teacher and a great instructor on his videos Steve make some awesome projects and he's also entertaining. I am not entertaining uh, and I'm trying to improve on my instructing so let's focus your comments on you know if you can learn anything from one of my 10 minute videos versus a longer video where things are might explained a bit but I'm not going to be making I'm not going to go back to making 30 and 40 minute videos but every once in a while, I may make a longer video when I want someone to learn. So give me your feedback, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys later. See ya.